Welcome in. Thanks for stopping by again on such short notice. We're back with another another pretty quick edition of IDP. This week we've got some uh, indie rock, some psychedelic type music, and also some dream pop and shoegaze. I'm sitting in the sun hoping for some better light than uh, than I have had, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna sweat through this, I think. I also feel like I have a bit of a sore throat, so probably a little less, try to cut out the silliness, and just get right down to business. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, we have the debut full-length release from, uh, I guess, what you could call a indie rock super group of sorts, go by the name The Hard Quartet, and they've released their self-titled album on Matador Records. Yeah, so the hard quartet features four members. It's, it's a hard quartet. Um, Stephen Malkmus, who needs really no introduction, also has Emmett Kelly from the Cairo Gang, has Matt Sweeney of Chavez and Superwolf and et cetera, has performed with people like from Johnny Cash to Adele, um, and also Jim White of the Dirty Three and many other excellent recordings under his own name. Yeah, they all contribute throughout the album. I would definitely say that Stephen Malkmus um, is the most prominent lead vocalist. And you do get a lot of his kind of Stephen Malkmus classic lyricism um, peppered in throughout the album as well. I think maybe because they all kind of contribute. Um, I think maybe the album plays a little uneven because of the different kind of different vibes that it kind of feels like it kind of flows in and out of. Um, still a solid album to be sure. I think maybe just for me it might play better in chunks as opposed to the full 15 minute or 15 track 52 minute you know runtime. This is definitely a must check out for your you know definitely for your like Stephen Malkmus fans in particular, but also, you know, aging indie rockers in general. So again, that's the Hard Quartet, and the album is called The Hard Quartet, and it's out now on Matador Records. So Next up, we have some psychedelic rock from Brisbane, Australia. It's a five-piece band called Nice Biscuit. This is their second LP, and it's titled SOS. This is perhaps a little bit of a transition from their debut release. It still has the kind of psychedelic rock, you know, in the mix, but with a bit of maybe dancey, even disco um, rolled in as well as jazz and, and global groove also. Super catchy, has big hooks, um, fuzzy guitars, kind of um, dual or tri-female um, vocal harmonies. It did take me a bit to kind of clock into the kind of more the more dancey grooves that this album is exploring, um, but I enjoy it fairly well, actually. I think the band's name is actually named after a coconut flavored biscuit, um, which is named after the city in France. So I think it's actually Nice Biscuit, but I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and say nice like an American. So Nice Biscuit, second LP for Nice Biscuit is called SOS.
This is a um, five-piece band out of Portland, Oregon. This is their fourth studio LP since 2008. The artist or the band is called Tears Run Rings, which I think is likely named after the 1988 Mark Almond synth pop song. Um, the name of this album is called Everything in the End. This is a kind of long, longish. It's clocks in just over an hour. The vinyl version is a double LP. Um, it's very sprawling, sprawling dream pop album that I would say at its most like pop moments is somewhat reminiscent of like, let's say the most recent slow dive LP. But the album does take a lot of, um, takes a number of different turns down dimly lit corridors, <laughs> mostly down tempo in general with just uh, maybe a couple exceptions. This one has grown on me over the last few weeks and I would say this plays better for me as a whole piece um, as opposed to having say a handful of standout tracks. It just, even though it is a little bit on the longer side, which I think can make it maybe a bit more difficult to get into, but anyway, Dream Pop fans might want to take a listen to this one. Artist again, um, out of Portland, Oregon, is called Tears Run Rings, and the fourth LP is titled Everything in the End. Next up we have the, I think we're going to call it the debut full-length release from a, a band called Heelys, H-E-A-L-E-E-S, and I'm not even going to attempt to say the name of the, the LP, I'm going to put it on the screen. They did release a self-titled kind of mini LP or long-ish EP back in 2022, but I think that they probably are going to consider this their, their debut full-length release. This is a quartet based in Paris, France, where the members are all from different countries. In fact, I don't think any of the members of the band are French. The vocals are all in English. This is moderately poppy shoegaze with, um, you know, shoegaze or post-punk with heavy effects laden, um, shimmering guitars hazy vocals, a lot, of, a lot of layers, fairly catchy tunes, a bit of like boy-girl um, dueling vocals, although primarily the lead vocalist is, is male. I like this album pretty much straight away, but I will say that like the, the opaque vocals kind of keep you at arm's length initially, or at least for me, but with additional spins, it, it slowly you know, reveals itself to you. I will say that generally speaking, while the vocals are in English, I don't know that I really understand, like because of the, because of how they're mixed, I don't know that I necessarily, they're not sing-along songs, I guess is what I would try to say. This one is definitely worth checking out for the, for the gaze heads out there. Depending on what country you reside in, the vinyl is already, I think, getting to be tough to order, I guess. Anyway, again, the name of this artist is Healy's. I can't pronounce the name of the album, <laughs> but it is out now. It's, it's, um, it's a joint release by Indie or Die Records, Safe Suburban Home Records, and Hidden Bay Records. Mm -hmm. 